In this video, we're going to talk about a monopsony labor market. A monopsony is defined to be a situation where there's a single buyer of a good. In the labor market, this would be a single firm that hires workers. Some examples where we might see this are a company town. We don't see too many of those anymore, but historically there were quite a few in the U.S. But we still see in many communities, rural hospitals, school districts, paper mills, coal mines, and so forth, that are the major employer of a given category of labor in their communities. Monopsonies are somewhat less likely in larger cities and communities. The military also serves as an example of a monopsony, or at least we hope it does. We hope there aren't too many other employers for fighter pilots or nuclear missile operators operating within our country. Because a monopsony is the only firm in its labor market, it faces the entire upward-sloping labor market supply curve. This diagram provides an example of a monopsony facing a market supply curve where it can hire two workers at a wage rate of $22 an hour, three workers at a wage rate of $24 an hour, or four workers at a wage rate of $26 an hour. In a competitive market, remember, the wage rate was the same for all workers, so the marginal cost of an additional worker was just the wage rate. But here, the situation is a little bit more complicated because in order to hire more workers, the firm has to pay a higher wage, not just to the new worker, but we're assuming to all workers. To measure the marginal cost of labor, we have to compute the marginal cost by computing the change in total cost and dividing that by the change in labor use. Let's work through that in this case. When two workers are hired, the total cost of these two workers would be $44. If the firm hires three workers, the cost would be 3 times 24, or $72. If the firm hires four workers, the cost of the labor would be 4 times 26, or $104. We can use this information to find the marginal costs of the third and the fourth workers. When labor use went from two to three, the cost of the labor increased from $44 to $72. Therefore, the change in total cost would be equal to 28 divided by the change in labor is 1, so we compute the marginal cost of labor is just 28 over 1, or 28. Similarly, when the fourth worker is hired, labor costs increase from 72 to 104, so the marginal cost of that fourth worker is 32 divided by 1, or $32. Notice in each case that the marginal cost of adding that worker is greater than the wage rate paid to the additional worker. And this is something the firm has to take into account because whenever it adds more workers, it raises the cost not just of the last worker, but of all workers. If we were to plot the marginal cost of labor on the same graph, we would end up with something that would look roughly like this. Here I've added the marginal cost of the third and fourth workers to this diagram and also extrapolated what the marginal cost of labor would be at other points. In general, the marginal cost of an additional worker will always equal the wage of the additional worker plus the increase in wages that it has to pay for the other workers. So again, when the third worker was added, that worker was paid $24. However, the first two workers had to receive a $2 pay increase for each of them, which would be $4 additional, leading to a marginal cost of that third worker of the $24 for the third worker plus $4 additional, or $28. Similarly, when the fourth worker was hired, the cost of adding that fourth worker would be $26, but now the pay had to be increased by $2 for the three earlier workers, so it would be equal to 26 plus 6, which is 32. In general, whenever the labor supply curve facing the firm is upward sloping, the marginal cost of labor will be greater than the wage rate, and that's illustrated in this diagram. You can also note that the vertical distance between the marginal cost of labor and the supply curve becomes larger as the quantity of labor increases. The reason for that is that each additional worker results in a pay increase going to a larger number of other workers. So the difference between wage and marginal cost becomes progressively larger. Let's talk about what happens in an equilibrium. 
the general principle that we've seen over and over again in this course is that firms will weigh the marginal benefits against the marginal cost. In the case of this labor market, that involves comparing the marginal revenue product of labor with the marginal cost of labor. And as we noted in an earlier video, the optimal level of employment will always occur at the point where the marginal revenue product equals the marginal cost of labor, which in this diagram occurs at the level of labor use of L sub M. To determine the wage, though, we have to look at the labor supply curve because the labor supply curve tells us what workers have to be paid in order to induce them to supply any given quantity of labor. So the wage is determined by this labor supply curve at the level of labor use at which marginal revenue product equals the marginal cost of labor. So this is what we would expect to see in a monopsony equilibrium. In either competitive or monopsonistic labor markets, the optimal level of employment occurs where marginal revenue product equals the marginal cost of labor, and the wage is given by the supply curve. The special case of perfect competition was different because the supply curve facing the firm was horizontal, and therefore the wage and the marginal cost of labor ended up being the same. So the marginal cost of labor was the same as the supply curve facing the firm, and we didn't see this difference between the wage and the marginal cost. We can compare in equilibrium in these two types of markets. In a monopsony, as we just established, the level of employment occurred at an output level where marginal revenue product equals marginal cost of labor, and the wage is determined by the supply curve. If this had been a competitive market, that marginal revenue product would correspond to the demand curve for the market because it would be the sum of the marginal revenue product for all the firms there. And in that case, the competitive equilibrium would occur where the market demand and market supply curves intersect, which would be at W star and L star. So what we can observe is that as compared to a competitive equilibrium, monopsony firms will hire fewer workers and will offer lower wage rates.